I remember a child when Elizabeth Taylor almost lost her shit when she found out that Rock Hudson had uh, HIV AIDS. Oh my God. She was like, oh my God, I kissed him. I kissed him, bitch, you ain't gonna die. And if you do die, you ain't gonna die for sucking face with the Rock Hudson. Well, hello there, love bugs. Hello there, Bellas. If you have not already done so, please remember to like, share to Facebook, subscribe, and visit uptopbeauty.com. Today's Looky Looky would be our Camellia Flower and our 640 bar ring in uh, gold and silver, okay? It is now on sale for $13. And if you are not already a part of our book club, please hit the Patreon link below and or the join button here on the YouTube. And for a small monthly fee of $5, you babies, yes, you can be privy to all the shenanigans before the YouTube gets it, if the YouTube gets it. Now, let's continue talking about Jennifer Lewis, the mother of Black Hollywood child. It's, it's, we getting close. We getting close to the end. I auditioned for the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air and was hired to play Aunt Helen. I was excited to get a primetime show that was already a hit. I had a blast working with the cast, especially Willie Smithy. One night I was backstage wearing a negligee. What the fuck are you backstage wearing a negligee for, girl? Ooh, you was plotting on that Will Smithy dick, wasn't you? You was plotting on them big ears and that big willy, you know, because you know that, uh, uh, what's her name? Jada Pinker Smith already didn't put it out there that big willy is big willy. One night I was backstage wearing a negligee. Will with his big ears, saw me and said, ooh, you look good. As always, he had a bunch of groupies hovering nearby. I motioned at him and said, come here. I pointed to those young women and said, now you go around there and you flirt with them little girls over there. Because see, if you flirt with me, little boy, I will fuck you. Ooh! In typical Will fashion, his response was, uh-oh, uh-oh. That's a Libra thing. That's us. That's just how we are. We just, that's just what we do. We just make a joke out of everything to take the, uh, let's say, the tension out of the air. And then he laughingly told everyone a story. It was a bonding experience, and he became quite protective of me. Our mutual admiration for each other's talent made it a joy to work on the show. I started hanging out with Janet Hubert. Fuck that bitch. Look at me. In my eyes. Look at me. You almost caused me to lose my damn channel. Okay? And I ain't do nothing to the hoe. I ain't do nothing to the hoe. She just, I think I used a piece of her commentary um, when I was doing, uh, what is that, celebrity gossip. Okay, and uh, I was providing my commentary about her commentary, okay? This fucking bitch contacted the YouTube and gave me a whole full copyright. So much so that I was like, oh shit. I started emailing the whole, look ho, okay? I don't know you like that. I don't know why they didn't, you know, put you through uh, everything that they didn't put you through around there to the, uh, what's your name, to the Will Smithy show, I don't know, okay, but I didn't do it to you, bitch. I don't have no problems with you, never have, never will, didn't matter. The whole did not respond to me, okay, because when you get a copyright strike here on YouTube, you can ask the person to take it off, you know, and I ain't talking about one of them jokes you get from playing music, you know, all they do is just take your income from you. 
But that shit that Jenny Huber put on me, she could have got my channel stricken. Fucking whore. I don't like that bitch. I don't I like her. And any way that they treated you on that show, it was probably deserved because you were a bitch. Poetic Justice star Jenny Jackson and Tupac Shakur, the hip hop legend. I played the mother of Tupac's character, of course. I had been a fan of Janice for years, but Tupac and the whole rap thing were pretty foreign to me. Mostly, I associated the hip hop scene with guns and danger. The day we were set to shoot our scene together, I walked to Tupac's trailer to rehearse. I could hear the music pounding before my knock was answered by an 18-year-old girl in hot pants and a bikini top. As she opened the door, a huge cloud of weed smoke engulfed me. I entered the trailer and I swear there must have been eight girls in there. The smoke was thick, the music was deafening, and I felt intimidated by Tupac's stuggy bodyguards and their tattoos. I stood there a second, not knowing what to do. Then, I guess the contact high kicked in because I shouted above the music, You motherfuckers, get the hell out. This son of a bitch has got to rehearse. There was a moment of shocked silence. Then Tupac said, Oh man, I love her. Y'all get the fuck out of here. We rehearsed, then shot our scene. Tupac was a total professional. A very impressive young man. 1993 was one of the biggest years in my career. I was still filming What's Love Got to Do With It when the producers from In Living Color came to see me. My contributions to In Living Color were Snooky, who's a woman gotta sleep with to get something to eat, and Mrs. Sheridan. That just proves my point. The Wayans brother had left by then, so unfortunately I didn't get to work with any of them. But Jim Curry, Jamie Foxx, and Takaya Crystal Kamaya were still there, and we had a blast. I had steady work as a regular on A Different World and was filming Poetic Justice. I also had a small part in Robert Townsend's Media Man and rejoined Whoopi as her backup singer in Sister Act. Whoopi was in the middle of doing the Whoopi Goldberg Show, a late night talk show that ran for about a year. She called me, come on down to the studio and hang out. When I pulled up to the studio, Eartha Kitt was leaving and Patti LaBelle was pulling up in a Rolls Royce. Take a deep breath, close your eyes, and imagine Eartha Kitt, Patti LaBelle, and Jennifer Lewis occupying the same space. When Patti LaBelle saw me, she said to Whoopi, ain't she the dean? It was a lovely day. My success in movie and television roles allowed me to become a first time homeowner. It was a huge deal for a poor girl from Kenmark. I bought a beautiful, spacious condominium in Studio City. I had a mortgage. I now belong to the Homeowners Association. I had two parking spaces, no more of that parking on the street shit where somebody steals your car, takes it on a joyride, and three days later the police return it with Taco Bell wrappers in the back seat. Assholes. Why she there in her condominium? Ooh, child. Ooh, I remember this. I had bought my first condo. Ooh, in Maryland. Ooh, child. Then here come the big shaker. Oh, we ain't never had no situation like that before, ever. Okay, in DC, that shit shook us. You hear me? That that shit was scary because it reminded us of 9/11. Um, okay, because 9/11 did shake DC. Okay. And when we got that, that, what year was that that we got that earthquake in D.C., y'all? Was it 2009, maybe 2010, I think? Ooh, it was rough, y'all. It was rough. It scared the shit out of us. But anyway, she's talking about when she uh, had her earthquake situation in her condo. Even though California is the shaky, shaky state, to me, you'll never get used to having the earth rattle, okay? You know what you're supposed to do, but what is the procedure when a gun is in your face, okay? They tell you what to do, but it don't mean that you actually going to do it, you know, because you sometimes are in a state of shock, right? That's why I always got to have me old smart, quick-thinking partner with me. Just a okay. few weeks after the earthquake, I was asked to step in for the disco queen Donna Summer at a fundraising concert for AIDS Project Los Angeles. The AIDS crisis was rampant and Hollywood royalty came out in droves that night. Whitney Houston, Elizabeth Taylor, 
Jennifer Holliday, Madonna, and countless more stars were there to honor entertainment idols whose lives were taken by the epidemic, including Rock Hudson. Y'all remember child when Elizabeth Taylor almost lost her shit when she found out that Rock Hudson had uh, HIV AIDS? Oh my God. She was like, oh my God, I kissed him. I kissed him. Bitch, you ain't gonna die. And if you do die, you ain't gonna die for sucking face with the Rock Hudson. But we didn't know that then. Okay. But child, Elizabeth Taylor was, was, was shook. Okay, because I think she had did a movie with Rock Hudson, and you know they had their romantic moments. I, I, I'm girl, you know how many gay men you just suck face with, but you don't know. I'm just finding out that the Perry Mason was an old legal gay, oh, uh, attorney gay. I didn't know that. Idols whose lives were taken by the epidemic, including Rock Hudson, Robert Maplethorpe, and Freddie Mercury. Not my Freddie. Not my Freddie. Oh my God, I love the Freddie Mercury. I love that he, oh, so astounding. He, to me, he's like the white prince. Not Prince Charles, but Prince Prince Roger, Prince Nelson, or Prince Roger Nelson. When I took the stage, accompanied by a six-piece orchestra, three backup singers, and a half dozen dancers, I could see two of my biggest idols, First Lady Hillary Clinton and Barbara Streisand sitting next to each other in the fifth row center. As one might expect, my performance was highly energetic and highly irreverent. My first words were, they couldn't get the bitch, referring to the fact that I was there singing Donna Summer songs. When I got to the part in the Jabara medley where I would sing Barbara Streisand's verse in Enough is Enough, I deliberately missed a note. Walking to the front of the stage to address Miss Streisand, I said, Barbara, can you help me with this note, honey? When I saw Barbara and Hillary turn to one another and laugh, my life was complete. And I got the first standing ovation of the night. During the summer, I went on a study tour of Egypt with acclaimed Egyptologist Professor Asa Hillard. Dr. Hillard who also was known as Nana Bafur Awantia III, provided an Afrocentric perspective on the history of this once great empire. When we were in Cairo, I scheduled a massage. The masseuse was a young and, of course, fine Egyptian man. He truly worked out my knots. He was so good that I scheduled a follow-up massage child. You mean a follow-up? Look, when you meet a man and a man be like, hi, he, you know, here's my card. This is, this is my card. Call me anytime. And it says on that blicker, masseuse, that means will accept money for dick. That's what that means. But let me continue. He was so good that I scheduled a follow-up massage. Fully intending to fuck him, didn't I tell you? But I was conflicted. Rachel and I recently had talked about how others can't rescue you, so I tried to work through the situation by writing about it in my journal. After a couple of drinks, I called Rachel to talk me out of it. Jennifer, it's 3 a.m. Los Angeles time. I'm sorry, Rachel, but I'm going to have to have sex with this man. No, you're not. She hung up. Rachel was not suffering my foolishness, and I did not have sex with the masseuse. I returned to the States only to learn from my answer machine that four friends had died from AIDS while I was away. I was taking my medications regularly. There were side effects, including dry mouth and a loss of sexual appetite, which was a blessing. So much for my sex addiction. My psychiatrist worked with me to adjust the dosage. It took patience, patience, patience to get the medication right. The best effect of the meds was that when the phone rang with bad news, I wasn't going to fall apart emotionally. At the New York premiere of the film Waiting to Exhale, Layla Rashawn sat on one side of me and Loretta Devine was on the other. Whitney Houston was behind me on the right, sitting next to Angela Bassett behind me on the left. I was surrounded by friends who starred in the film. The film that I had not gotten apart. I came home insanely depressed. 
but then felt very proud of myself because I actually got out of bed, grabbed my journal, and sat with my feelings as Rachel had suggested. Must have worked because I had a great time on the preacher's wife set the next day. Whitney and I took to each other like eggs and bacon. <laughs> Now, if you have not already done so, please remember to like, share to Facebook, subscribe, and visit uptopbeauty.com. Now, remember this. The same people that you meet on the way up will always be the same people that you meet on the way down. My naysayers, my patron loves. You babies, y'all better have a good one. Be safe. And just because they tell you to take them goddamn masks off, don't do it, baby. Don't do it. We don't know these niggas out here. We don't know them, okay?